Let's pray. The Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be mental attitude type, sins of the tongue or overt. They should be confessed in silence and privacy for the Holy Spirit to have great teach and recall ministry in your life. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, that's to a believer in his personal sins. He, God, is faithful and just. Uh, there's our word, faithful and just, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. See, the justice of God is still working in our life. Now part of the members of the family. He is just. So I give you at a moment, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us, which restores us through the work of Christ on the cross to the believer's life through confession to be restored to spirituality or sanctificational ministry of the Holy Spirit in the Christian life. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come our way by the automobile and the internet today. I pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth. What did David discover that Paul saw? I discovered in David's life an enormous doctrinal principle that comes from justification by faith as a gift. Reveal that to us today, Father. Disclose it through the ministry of the Holy Spirit as taught in John 16, 13. And we'll be better for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about a few things today. Uh, one thing, I'd like to have you look in your Bibles at Romans, the third chapter in verse 26. Paul says, for the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time. A demonstration of his righteousness at the present time that he might be just, talking about Christ, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Now, now listen to me. Look up here. <laughs> we just did that. Now li listen to what he just said. He will be Verse 26, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. We just did that in 1 John 1, 9. What's 1 John 1, 1, 9 say? Say it in your head. Don't say it out loud. Just say it in your head. What, what's 1 John? And if you don't know it, then you ought to look it up. Until it gets in your head. It'll get in your head once it gets in your heart, you know. It won't stay in your head if it doesn't get to your heart, you know. The Holy Spirit can recall it from your heart. You'll forget it from your head. If we confess our sins, he's what? Faithful. He's what? Faithful and just. To forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. You know what that does? It takes the believer's life back to the cross. When you confess your sin, not only is your sin cleansed, but all unrighteousness. It takes you all the way back to the cross. Because at the cross, you were unrighteous and your unrighteousness was taken from you. Positionally. Pray tell you know that unrighteousness... There none, listen, Romans, the third chapter, verse 10, there are none righteous, no, not, not one. We're all unrighteous. In Adam, we're all unrighteous. That's why you need to be saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. You can't produce this righteousness that God demands under justice. Because the only way you can get it under God's justice is by grace. It's a gift. It points to Christ, and it always points to Christ. It always points to Christ. It always points to Christ. It 
See how powerful a little idea can be? He is the just and the justifier of those who have faith. That's a pretty powerful idea. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Here is the third chapter, verse 28 through 30. For we maintain, that's doctrinally, because we can prove it. When we maintain something, he's talking about we can maintain it. It's maintained in the scriptures doctrinally. We can look at the doctrine of justification and run it all the way through the Bible and be consistent. For we maintain, that's the only way you can get to the word, we maintain. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. We maintain it. And nobody's going to slide me away from it because I'm, it's maintained in the word of God. Or is God the God of the Jew only? Mm-mm. Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes. He didn't, he didn't leave it to you to get the answer because everybody was all over the place with that. Nobody. Listen, half the church would have said no. So he didn't give them a chance because that's why he wrote Romans. Yes. You should say yes. Where does the yes come from? Listen, maintain. If you don't maintain, you ain't got a yes. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? You understand this? I'm just reading what it says. Since indeed God, who will justify the circumcised by faith, that's the Jew under law, and the uncircumcised through faith is one. You know why? Christ. When he died on that cross, he put the Jew and the Gentile on equal footing under justification by faith. They both get saved by grace. They both live by grace. They both die by grace. Grace is everything. The one is gr the grace of God. They are one. Paul picked that subject up in, in Galatians, the third chapter, didn't he? Yeah, he did. In the third chapter, down there in 26, 27, 28, in that section, he tells you the same thing. In Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, male or female, a slave or free. We are all one in whom? Christ. A lot of people tell you different. You got to maintain. What, how are you going to maintain, right? How are you going to maintenance your faith? The word of God. You don't listen to what people tell you all this stuff. Listen to what the Bible tells you. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He will speak truth to your soul. If you let him, stop running rabbits. Maintain your maintenance. Your maintenance is the word of God under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We maintain. We maintain. We maintenance. You maintenance your car, your truck. You should maintenance your wife and your husband. You know, all these gifts from God. Yeah. Be thankful you have one. That would be my prayer for you. Be thankful you have one. So under justification, we are one in Christ. How? Grace. And you'll always be one in grace. In the eyes of God, you are always one in Christ. Never a day when God views your life any other way. Oh, but Ron, I, I fell off the wagon. I don't know what kind of wagon you're riding. You know, get handlebars or something. Fell off the wagon. Well, get back, get back on a different wagon, right? Don't keep riding the same wagon. That'd be my ar argument. Now, let me talk about a few things, and we'll go home. Because if you got everything I told you so far, I'm pretty happy. If you're still struggling with what I just said, boy, you and I have got, but that's okay. Look, my job is to teach you. Your job is to learn. Uh, I can't make you learn, but I can teach you. <laughs> All right. Here's point number one. Let's take a look at what, what, what we have here. In verses 6 through 12, I see two parts. I see David's testimony about spiritual blessings. I'm going to read it in a minute to you. 
at verses 9 to 12, I see Paul's testimony about the spiritual blessings that Abraham and David both found. They both come to the same conclusion, just like Martin Luther and just like Ron Adam and just like you if you pay attention to the word of God. Justification by faith through grace. Now, I want to go and look at Romans 4, 6 through 8. Because he's going to tell you what, how David discovered justification by faith. Just as David also speaks or communicates of the blessings. Now, that word blessings... I don't even know what the average person, I don't know what you know what it means, so I'm going to make sure we know what this word means. I'm going to teach it to you in the Hebrew, and I'm going to teach it to you in the Greek. Because this word is a unique word for blessings. This is not like the blessings of Barak in Hebrew. This is a whole, that's a whole different word. I put it on your paper. Asherah. Asherah is the Hebrew word. It's not Barak. It's Asherah. As David also speaks of the blessings upon the man to whom God reckons or credits righteousness apart from works. Now he quotes David out of Psalms 32, 1 and 2. Now what you don't see in verse 7, well, let me just do it. Hold your place in Romans, and let's go to uh, Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 32. I want, you to go, I want you to see something. Because, you know, we maintain, maintain, we, we always take a look at the Word of God. When they, when they quote something, we take a look at it, make sure it's been in proper print and everything. And, and here's what's something that's u really unique. Now, get, get into Psalms 32 with me, verse 1 and 2, because that's what he's quoted. If you have a study Bible, Romans uh, 4, 7, and 8, you will see it comes from Psalms 32, 1 and 2. Would you agree with that? Well, if you don't, you will in a minute. <laughs> I'm just saying if you have a study Bible, they would tell you in the footnotes somewhere, cross-reference. Now, but watch how the Hebrew does this. And I want you to watch the two times the word how blessed. I can't tell you how important that is. In the Hebrew, that's really, that's a big deal. How blessed, now watch this. How blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. You got that? Now, he says how blessed is the person whose transgressions is forgiven, whose transgression, that transgression is singular, it goes back to Adam's sin, is forgiven, whose sin is covered. You see these two things? The transgression is forgiven, and the sin, singular, is covered. Now, that's talking about, that's Adamic sin. And, and, and how does God, what does God say to the person who has believed the gospel of Jesus Christ and has been acquitted. See, that's the quit, acquitted. Has been acquitted, meaning transgression. The transgression is forgiven and the sin is covered. Are you with me? What's the, what, what's the gift he gives them? What's the gift? How blessed. Right? How blessed is the one who has this? How blessed. Are you with me? Now, remember, that's a shera. Now, look at verse 2. How blessed is the one or the man, the one to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. See those two things? See? That's all under the same deal. All under the same package. Of, and listen, Paul takes that and puts it under justification by faith. He took that, that and you know, what the, you know what Psalms 32 is now? We, we know this for sure. It's a Messianic Psalms. It's a Psalms about the coming of Christ.
David wrote a lot of them, by the way. Now we're back. Now see, when the writer, when whoever translated this, when they translated, they didn't give you how blessed. Huh? They did it with a different word, but it is how blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven, whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. The New American Standard Version of what he just said. L listen, now I want to read 6, 7, and 8. Just as David also speaks of the blessing upon the man to whom God reckons or credits righteousness apart from works. He says, here's what David said. How blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have, sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Now, on your paper, you see, I said that this word in the Hebrew, asherah, is a unique word. Do you see that under point one? And here's, what it, here's how it's translated. It's translated, blessed happiness. Blessed happiness. It is a gift. It comes from justification from faith. That's Paul's subject. Just like we get peace from God, we get righteousness. Listen, we get blessed happiness. It's yours for the taking, just like peace. All the beneficial things that you get from the grace of God. Blessed happiness. Isn't that interesting? A happiness in your life that's come from God blessing you. That, that God can give you grace and you have such an appreciative heart for him. It doesn't matter how much he gives you. It's the fact that he gave it to you without any strings attached to it. That it was God's bestowed favor upon you in Christ. And just because you're a child of God, just because you're a child of God, God's desire in his heart, your position in his family causes him to always see you with a desire in his heart to give you blessed happinesses. The happinesses in your life that God has signed off on, they're blessed happinesses. They're not attached to something temporal in your life, something attached to the eternal God in your life. You know what I would encourage you to do? When you go home today and this week, you ought to start writing them down on a piece of paper, the blessed happinesses that you have in your life. Because you moan and complain about too much when you have really nothing to complain about. You live in one of the greatest nations under the, one of the greatest flags. You should stop this Thanksgiving into the Christmas holidays and begin to tell God how blessed you have been. And when you do, you will find a sense of happiness in the eternal, not in the temporal. Sometimes that's difficult to do. If you don't see it as something God has signed off on, is very blessed to be there in your life. When I choose that, then I find a contentment in my life. I find a peace that passes all understanding. I, I, I find a happiness about it that the world would never understand. There's no way I could explain to a world 
the happiness I have in the loss of Jane. There's no way. But when you come to the blessed side of it, and you understand the principle of justification by faith that God's grace is poured to your life and always poured to your life. You've got, your life has gone through nothing or your loved one's life has gone through nothing that God has not signed off on and therefore it's a blessed experience and I can find joy and happiness and peace in my life from it. I can find contentment from it. Instead of sitting around and complaining to God about your loss. Your loss is a gain, and it's a gain for him, as well as you. But you, you have to understand this justification, and David later in his life discovered, Abraham later in his life discovered it through his study of the word of God, that justification by faith is not just an experience that you have in your salvation, it's an experience you should be having every day in your life when things are getting tough in your life. When, you know, and we have those days. It just seems like it's piling up. None of it has, has listen, God has looked at you and said, you're well, you're well capable of doing Listen, you do it with your kids, with their, with their education, the things you know they know. And they're and they're 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 not getting the they're not getting the right answers for it. You know they have it, right? That's a, a blessed situation. Why are you losing your happiness? Why are you losing your happiness? I mean, why has somebody else's struggle become yours to the degree that you're unhappy? How is that possible? I mean, I, I know it's possible, but why is it possible in your life? Why are you allowing that? Well, this word blessing that David used, Asherah, means a blessed happiness. Then Paul comes in verses 9 through 12, and he takes that word blessing again. In the Greek, it's uh, makarismos. Ma that, the Greek word is makarismos. This is the word that's used both times. It's used three times, verse 7, verse 8, and now verse 9. He says, Paul says, is this blessing then upon the circumcised or the uncircumcised also? For we say, for we say, see, those who can maintain can say and can say with authority because they have the Bible to back it. Consistent Bible to back it, cat called categorical thinking. He says, but we say faith was reckoned or credited to Abraham as righteousness. See, see listen, that's a, that's a blessed happiness. I'm always righteous. God always sees me this way. Even, even as a believer, when I do unrighteous things, God still sees me as righteous. He can't see me any other way under justice. Dikey. Because I'm under justification by faith. I had the good sense. I wasn't brilliant. I just had the good sense to believe the gospel. And when I did, I got acquitted from Adam's 13 judicial charges. I was justified by faith the way God views me. And I, I now have blessed happinesses in my life in my, through my spiritual growth eyes. Eyes that can see. You know, the, the Philippians 1 idea. Paul's testimony regarding spiritual blessings was the equality of imputed righteousness. 
He said one of the great blessings of happiness is that in Christ, everybody is equal. There's no smarter, no dumber, no whiter, no blacker. Right? No rich, no poor. This is not in Christ. How did I get in Christ? My sins were acquitted. They were covered, acquitted. My transgression was gone. I'm no longer, no longer, no longer under the iniquity of us all. I have a lot to be happy about. Blessed assurance. When I have my days, I go set in the chair with the blanket that Gary Horton gave, gave us at my wife's funeral. Her song was Blessed Assurance, and how, how he ever got a, a cover with that on it is beyond me. But it, you talk about something sent from God. I go in there and I sit in that chair and I sit there till I've got something to be happy about. It don't take me long. It don't take me long. Most of the time. Blessed assurance. That's what the writer is saying. Blessed assurance. Listen, if you got blessed assurance, you got something to be happy about. Not the way the world would understand it. You, you've got a piece of the happiness of God. Blessed happiness. That's the Hebrew word. The equality of imputed righteousness is a wonderful gift. We ought to be blessed for that. And Paul writes about it. Look at, look at uh, the fourth chapter, verse 10. Sometimes we miss stuff that's right under our nose. In verse 10, he says, how then was it reckoned or credited? Talking about righteousness. Well, well, then how was righteousness credited? Well, he was circumcised or uncircumcised. Not while well circumcised, but uncircumcised. You know what you miss? Words like, Watch this now. Here's what you miss because you don't pay attention. See the word while and not while? You know, stuff like that's important when you study the Bible. You look for stuff like that. The Holy, listen, if you'll just let the Holy Spirit teach you, he'll point this stuff out. And listen, what, what, listen you should circle those like, the, on your, no, not in your Bible, I guess. I, where, how we're, circle it in your mind, I guess. <laughs> then in verse 11, he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had while uncircumcised, that he might be the father of us all who believes without being circumcised, that righteousness might be reckoned to him. In other words, listen, Paul got circumcised. I mean, uh, Abraham got circumcised 430 years before the law came into existence. But, but Abraham didn't get circumcised because there was a law that said it. When the law came up and said to be circumcised, it pointed to Jesus. Listen, he didn't have it. He had the Abrahamic covenant that pointed to the seed of Christ. I'll, I'll, before I get through with my whole study with you, I'll do a, a doctrine on circumcision for you. I can't believe how this has crept in, how the circumcision and the law has crept into the Christian church. On males. You know, it was a male deal, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. And the father of circumcision, verse 12, of the father of circumcision to those who not only are of circumcision, but who also follow the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had while uncircumcised. Then he goes on to the promise given to Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. Point number two. Paul taught that David wrote about a believer's blessed happiness that comes with justification by faith 
when he penned Psalms 32, 1 and 2. Blessed happiness in Christ is the result of a believer's position in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Justification by faith results in God's bestowed favor of blessed happiness upon each believer, no matter what circumstances of life. You, you, you say to yourself, well, I don't have anything to be happy about today. Of course you do. Look at the cross of Christ. What do you mean you don't have anything to be happy about? You're saved. You're bound for heaven. You've, God's given you a whole, a whole chest full of blessings, and you sit around sucking your thumb rather than paying attention to the Word of God. You ought to get in prayer in the Word of God when you get unhappy. Find you a comfortable chair to sit down and get, get right with God. Jeez, my goodness, people. Romans 8.28, you see, Romans 8.28 works to these people all the time who understand blessed happiness. Now listen to me. It's not based on circumstances, not the temporal things in your life. <clears throat> we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God for those who are called according to his purpose, right? See, that's based on this blessed happiness. You can, listen, no matter how the circumstances of life go in your life, you can still maintain blessed happiness. Why? Because you're in a blessed state. My, my, my. You have more reason every day, no matter what the circumstances going on in your life, you have every day more than the average person out there, that unbeliever don't have any reason to praise God. Only when things go good does he have happiness. You can be happiness no matter what because of, your, because of your status in God. You have blessed happiness. You, that's a, a stated position you have in Christ. And you should, listen, you should always have cause to praise God no matter what your circumstance. He is always on your side. The world's always against it. <laughs> when a world gives you a handout, grab a hold of your billfold. Number three, when you compare Psalms 32, 1 and 2 with Romans 4, 6 and 8, you will find the comparison I put on your... Here's what you lose in Adam, here's what you gain in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, all die in Adam, all live in Christ. And there's a comparison. The human race is always in need of justification by faith because of the 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin upon all the human race. That is declared out of Genesis 2, 16 and 17, Romans 5, 12, 21, and of course, the book of Romans. The gospel of grace, salvation, is the only divine source, uh, a solution to the Adam's sin the only one, we talked about it in our introduction, Romans 5, 9, much more than, much more than, Paul loves that phrase in Romans, much more than, much more than, if I could get you to understand that, I'd be happy, much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. See, listen, justification on Jesus' part is his blood. Justification on your part is faith in that. Did you get that? If you didn't, you better write it down before you lose it. Because if it's just in your mind, you've already lost it. If you don't write it down. But now if you believed it, it's in your heart. You don't have to write it down. The Holy Spirit's got it now. Teach and recall. Now, in the final point, and I'm going to close with it. Where am I, John? I'm past time. On one side of your page, now this is for homework. Home study. Once you get out of school or college, I can't call it work anymore. I still do. It's home study. I put 13 judicial charges over on the left column and Bible verses all the way down to 13 judicial charges. 
There are more. I just gave you enough to overwhelm you. I put them in alphabetical order so you could memorize them. The answer to them, on the gray side, that's, in Adam, this is what you got. Over on the right column, in Christ, this is what you get. So I'm going to take two of them, we're going to look at them. I can't look at all of them, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to look at the first one and the last one. And then you can do this exercise on your own. All right, so alienation. Let's, let's, go to, let's go to Colossians. Let's go to Colossians 1. And I'm going to, I'm going to read from, thir, uh, from 20 through 23. And through him to reconcile all things to himself. That's what reconciliation is all about. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. You talk about the, the impact of the crucifixion of Christ and the blood of Jesus. Not only does it affect earth, it affects heaven. I mean, that ought to sink in your heart really deep. And although you were formerly, that's in Adam, formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, right? Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. That's what grace offers you. If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all of creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. You know how effective the blood of Christ is? On earth, we know what it is. It's how it affects our personal life, doesn't it? But you see, that same blood of Christ affects my wife's presence in heaven. For without the blood of Christ, my wife would have not gone to heaven. But because of the blood of Christ, my wife, when she left this earth, she went to heaven. The blood of Christ is a powerful force, not only on the earth, but a powerful force for heaven. And you should find comfort in that. Now, Let's go to Ephesians. I'm going to show you the other side. That's the alienation side in Adam and how Christ is the one that gets us out of it. So let's go back just a book or two backwards to Ephesians. We're going to look at 119. So here I have alienation. We're all under alienation from God. From God. A alienated from God in life. Don't matter whether you go to church, if you haven't believed the gospel of Christ, you're still alienated. Singing the choir, still alienated. You got to believe the gospel of Christ to have that removed. I don't care how many religious and good things you do. Now, here we are in verse 19. Ephesians 1, no, 2.19, I'm sorry, 2.19. I looked at that and I went, that's not it. Here we are in verse Verse 19. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens. See that? Alienated. See that? No longer. You know why? Because you believe the gospel of Christ. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and of, are of God's household. You are not alienated from God. You are a member of God's household. And you will always be a member of God's household. There will never be a day after you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, right. there will never be a day in your life when you don't belong to the household of God. Man, 
And you ought to be thankful for that. You know why you're a member of the household of God? Because God became your Abba Father. He became your father by adoption. He adopted you. You were a bastard, an illegitimate child, Hebrews 12. In Adam, we were all that way. And he adopted you by the grace of God. He adopted you, not because you were worthy of it. Nobody else would have. Nobody else would have, but God did. And he did it by grace. He didn't, listen, he looked at the quality of Christ and your faith in him and took you into his household, took you into his family. And he will love you more than anybody will ever love you ever in your life. And you ought to embrace his love because his embrace will get you through every unloving circumstance of your life. His love. You know why? And it will bring you happiness if you allow him to bless it. If you see it as a blessed, you will find happiness. Raft. And then we'll go home. In John 3, 6, in John 336, raft, the raft of God. I went to Luke. John, just to give you an idea, John 336. You know 16, but a lot of people don't pay any attention to 36. 36. 336. Last verse. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But oh, but oh, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on him. That's part of Adam's sin deal. The only way that wrath is removed is through Jesus Christ. You got to believe the gospel of Christ. You don't get away. Now, I just, let's just go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Man, come on, Thessalonians. First, <laughs> my Bible's starting to tear up. 1 Thessalonians. Uh, let's go to the ninth, let's go to the fifth chapter, verse 9. Then we'll go back to one. For God has not dest destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Okay? Now, he's talking spiritual terms there. Now, let's go back to the first chapter and let's look at what, 9 and 10, at least 9. For the word of the Lord, that's verse 8. For they themselves report about, let's see, first, first, last nine, one nine. For they themselves report about us, what kind of reception we had with you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. Watch this now. To wait, that verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, that we call a second coming, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who delivers us from what? The wrath to come. You know where that is? That's the lake of fire in Revelation 20. I mean, if you can't find anything else to be blessed happy about, be happy about that. <laughs> Blessed happiness, all right? Well, let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Thank you for coming. Let us stand. Let's, let's go ahead and stand. I know I've, 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 I've kept you seated a pretty good while today. Father, we're so thankful for your love, mercy, and grace. I thank you, Father, for these that have been so attentive in our Bible study. I pray the same, the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon the Internet. I pray, Father, we've come to uh, some understanding about what David and Abraham and what Paul, what Martin Luther and others throughout the ages have discovered through the study of the Word of God, that justification by faith through Christ and the gospel has brought blessed happiness to our lives. There's nothing, in our, nothing that could happen in this world to our life that should shake us out of blessed happiness. 
It comes with the package of grace salvation. It will come through grace to our life under every circumstance and need in our life. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.